All right, so we are here to talk about your lab report for the Atomic Spectra Lab. Like normal, page one is gonna be your lab rubric, still found on Canvas. Your lab report form found at the chemistry website is page two. On page three, you'll have a graph that's computer generated. This one's a little different. You're gonna have on the y-axis the centimeters that you've been reading off the spectroscope, and then wavelength and nanometers. And this graph is based off of the mercury lamp, so make sure that you look at that. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. You'll have the title for it. It should be linear, and you're gonna have a y equals mx plus b, so you'll have a trend line for that. Page four, I just need one representative set of calculations, so if it's a new calculation, you need to show it. Very short area though. And then the last page is the carbon copy of the data only. So part one, we've got four parts essentially to this lab. So part one is the generation of that graph. And you need that graph first before you can do anything else. So let's see where that information comes from. Let's come over here to this online. This is your actual report form sheet. You'll notice here's your mercury lamp. This is where this information here is where we're going to generate that graph. And the nanometers here, so 404 is your violet line, 580 is your yellow, 546 green, and so forth. In lab, you were to measure the mercury lamp. And when you saw the violet, kind of that purplish color, you read down the centimeters from the spectroscope. So this is data that you collected from lab. So you should have the centimeters, and these are the nanometer wavelengths given for those colors or line spectra. So you will generate a graph where you have your number in centimeters versus your wavelength in nanometers. This is the data from where the graph comes from. Everything else, so you'll see, maybe you chose to do the hydrogen lamp. So the hydrogen lamp will have information here, whatever lamp you chose for this. Um, and these, we will write down the centimeters and I'll talk to you about how to get to the nanometers. But first off, you need this information here to graph or generate your graph. Now in part two, once you get that graph, now remember I told you, you're gonna end up with a trend line. And that trend line, you need for each of those centimeters you measure for the lamps or for the salts, you need to then put those centimeters in. So let's say that you had a sodium salt that you used. And you had a wave, uh, uh, you measured 6.5 centimeters. You need to find out what is that in nanometers. So part two is all of that data you've collected from the spectroscope in centimeters, you need to then convert to nanometers. You don't just convert it using conversion factors, you use the graph from part one. So here is your Y value that you would plug in, and after you plug that in, you'll get an X value, and that will be your nanometer. So use the graph information to get from your 6.5 centimeters or whatever you measured for your salts and for your other lamps and so forth. You'll plug that in and get your nanometers. That's part two. Then in part three, it asks you to generate what is the actual energy of the wavelength emitted by said sodium salt. What is that energy from that wavelength? And it wants you to have that in kilojoules per mole of photons. So we've got to use this equation that we learned from chapter six, where it relates energy to wavelength. Now remember your HC are constant, so we use Planck's constant, or in this case, we'll use Einstein's form. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times second per photon. And then we've got the speed of light, and that speed of light is also a constant, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we have this wavelength, whatever the wavelength was from your 6.5 that you generated using the trend line from your graph. I'm gonna make one up. So I'm gonna say 434 nanometers. Now, the question is, can I leave this in nanometers or do I have to convert it? Because remember, we wanna end in an energy unit. And you'll notice I have nanometers here and meters here. So I have to reconcile those two. They can't be in different units. 
So you've got to do a conversion to meters. You need to get that 434 to meters, then make the calculation. So here, once you get this answer, you'll end in joules per photon. Now remember, we want to finish with kilojoules per mole of photon. So you can see we've got to get from joules to kilojoules, which is a conversion, and you should have, know how to do that. We've also got to get rid of this photon, and we want to get it to moles. So you need to do that conversion as well. So essentially you're going to get to per moles here, or moles to the negative one. Now, what this should trigger in terms of photons and moles is Avogadro's number, because remember, for every one mole, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons, for example. So you can use that conversion factor to get you to kilojoules per mole and get rid of your photons. Then the very last thing that you'll do in part four is it asks you to tell you what kind of line it is. Well, is it a line or continuum source? So I'm going to slide over here just gently. You'll see type. That means if here you want to know if it's a continuum or a line source. And essentially, it's just what you saw. So you'll notice that all of these elements that you measured, they had specific lines, hence line source. Or if you saw a continuum source, you saw a blur of lines, as if you looked at white light. So in part four, you're going to give the type of source that you saw, and that's essentially going to be one of two, line or continuum, either one. And you can shorthand it for L or C, that's fine. All right, so that's your full lab report, and I'll see you tomorrow.